What's going on you guys and welcome back to the channel. In this video we'll be continuing from where we left off in the last video where we created our Rust project. So in this one we'll focus on strings and string interpolation and what I want to do or the way I want to structure this series is for each video there will be like a dedicated file for it. So in this case we'll have strings as that will be our main focus for today. And yeah, so inside strings, we'll create a function and this function, we want to use this inside main.rs. So we want to call this function here as well. So in order to do that, we have to set it as public and to do that, just type in pub and then function or fn and the name of it. So we'll call the string interpolation like so. So this pub allows us to call this function from a different file. I'm just going to lower this a little bit, but yeah. So the first thing is let's create a variable. We'll say the name. So let name equal John. So what we're saying here is within name store John, the string John. And the type here is inferred, so we don't need to specify a string here. Although you can, in our case, we don't need to as it just infers it based on what we've given it already. And we'll create one saying age and we'll set that to 34. Then we can go ahead and print this out. So we can say something like my name is and we'll in here, we'll throw in John, uh, the name variable. I am oops. I am, and then the age years old. So in order to pass that in, we'll say name and then age and the order matters because this set of curly brackets will, the name will be thrown into that into the first one. And for the second one, we'll throw in age. So we can go ahead and run this. So back inside main.rs, we can import it by typing in mod and then strings like so. And then within main, we can call it. So let's do strings and then colon colon to make that call and hit enter if you have the autocomplete and then with the semicolon. So this calls our method that we just created string interpolation here. So we can run that and do cargo run. And here you'll see it, this my name is John. I am 34 years old. So one thing to highlight is I think with Python and JavaScript, you can interpolate a string like there and then, for example, you could say something like, um, I don't know, uh, with Python, it'd be something like introduction equals my name is like so, and what you tend to do is something like put an F there and then put in name. Like this doesn't work in Rust, uh, as, as you can see with these kind of squiggly lines, this is not valid code. So you can't like interpolate a string like as is, uh, but in order to do that, you have to make a function call. And actually, yeah, the one thing to point out is that the reason why we can do it here in print line is because the print line exclamation mark this function allows us to interpolate a string. So it supports interpolation, but as a string, like as it is, as a type, you cannot interpolate it. But in order to interpolate it, let's do something like let movie equal the Godfather. Like so, and we can say fave movie and we can set that to and we can do format. So this allows this format allows us to interpolate a string. So format ex exclamation mark. And this will just be my favorite film is and then pass in movie like so. And I forgot the let keyword. So there's one thing is, is that we're using this let statement a lot. So let name equal John, let age equal 34. And this is, this allows us to create a variable. And one thing that 
by default Rust has is that all variables are immutable uh, from the get-go. And what that means is we cannot change this variable name or age later on. So we cannot say something like name equals Mary. As that doesn't work, it will say maybe we get an error, error. Cannot assign twice to immutable variable name. So in order to kind of combat that, we could say something like MUT. So this mute. And that mute, that basically means mut mutable, and that tells Rust that this variable name John or this variable name uh, can be changed. So we're changing it here, and that's like legal with um, Rust. And we get this squiggly line because um, yeah, this John value is never read, and Rust is very strict when it comes to the stuff like this, which is great. I mean, it helps with uh, like writing clean code at least. So I'm just going to remove that, but that's what this let and let mute, uh, mut kind of, uh, those keywords, that's what they let us do. And now here also we get a squiggly line under fave movie. And that's because as it says, it's an unused variable. So let's make, let's put that to use. We can say print line. And then if we type in fave movie, like we get another squiggly line. So like it's very opinionated um, in terms of how we write it. So it's saying former argument must be a string literal. So you can't just pass in a variable into print line. You have to interpolate it. So like we did on line five here, we can do um, double quotes and then curly brackets and then fave movie like so. And there it doesn't complain anymore. We can go ahead and run this. Let me just bring this terminal up a little bit and I'm going to clear it and then cargo run. And there we go. My name is John. I'm 34 years old. My favorite film is The Godfather. So yeah, that works fine. And as you can see, like both these are a new line. So this didn't just carry on from here. And that's because this print LN is basically saying print on a new line. So it'll create a new line for each print statement it makes. So yeah, that's how you can format or interpolate a string um, in Rust without having to like print it like we did here. So just make this format call there. So that's basically like basic interpolation. We can also do like positional arguments or positional interpolation. And we can say something like, um, let's do print ln. Um, I say favorite fruits or I don't know, um, basket of fruits. I think that's probably makes more sense in terms of what we're about to do. So we can say something like zero here, one, oops, two, and then zero. And you'll see what I'm doing in a second. So this takes in basically three different variables. So it takes in zero, one, and two. So zero will be the first one that we pass in. So for example, apples. And then the second one will be like, so for one as a zero index, this is the first, zero is the first one, one is the second. We can say pairs. And for two, we can say bananas like so, and then semicolon at the end. And uh, I have like the Rust extension. That's why it kind of auto formatted it into onto a new line. That's why when I hit save, that's why I did that. So we can go ahead and run this. And we can, yeah, so cargo run. Just bring this up a bit. So we get, my name is John, I'm 34 years old, favorite film, and then Bosco fruits, apples, pears, bananas, apples. So if we go back to the strings, so apples matches with the zeroth element, pears matches with the first, bananas matches with the second, and it goes back to zero, so it will be apples. So it's matching it up, so apples is assigned to zero, pears is assigned to one, bananas is assigned to two. So that's like um, positional arguments. We can also use um, keyword arguments. So for example, we can say, um, print ln 
movies. So we can do something like, uh, let's say the Godfather. Well, actually, since we've already used that, let's call it something else. Let's do um, Harry Potter. Um, let's do another one. Let's say Shawshank. And it's another film, um, Lord of the Rings. So we can say now Harry Potter equals Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. I'm making these unnecessarily long. I'm sorry about that. Um, just hit save, so auto formatted it. We can do uh, Shawshank. We'll set that to uh, Shawshank. I think it's the Shawshank Redemption. I always forget. Shawshank Redemption. Never mind. Doesn't really matter. And then Lord of the Rings. We can set that to just Lord of the Rings, like so. So what that will do is this is like keyword, um, like positional arguments uh, or interpolation. So. Harry Potter matches with Harry Potter, Shawshank matches with Shawshank, and Lord of the Rings matches with Lord of the Rings. And just hit semicolon at the end there. And let's go back to the terminal, clear it, and do cargo run. And there we go. Movies, Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, Shawshank Redemption, Lord of the Rings. So yeah, that's how we can um, use interpolation. So we've looked at like basic interpolation, and then we've looked at like basic positional uh, interpolation and then um, keyword uh, interpolation. So yeah, a lot of like fancy words. Don't be intimidated by it. What we're basically doing is passing in variables into a string. And like to give another example of uh, where like interpolation could be useful, we can look at something called uh, the panic function. So let's create a new function called uh, crash like so and we can say the let's do let reason something messed up like so and then we can do call this function called panic and we can say we can pass in a message saying I just crashed and pass in the reason. So this kind of panic, this panic function here, what that does, it basically ends the program. I mean, when I mean end, when I, I'm losing words, uh, when I say ends, it's like it completely finishes the program. And I think best practice wise, you don't tend to use that uh, a lot. Uh, and I think Rust also gives you some warnings, but we can just go ahead and look at it now. But you can see as well, like under this crash function name, like it gives us this warning function is never used. So again, like it says, yeah, warn dead code. It's literally calling it dead code um, as we're not using it. So back in main.rs, we can do strings and then crash. Let's just clear it. And then back in the terminal, we can say cargo run. So we get everything that we got before. And then we see this here, thread main panicked at, I just crashed, something messed up. So it gives us kind of like this message, this warning message here. Uh, and yeah, like that's, that's really it. That's it with string interpolation. So if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and also subscribe. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.